hello my lovelies welcome back to my channel this is your girl angel from simply angel tia in this video i'm going to show you guys how to crochet this uh, long mesh dress and as you can see it's very simple it's going to be very easy to work it's very fast as well because you're repeating the same uh, pattern all the way you can make this into a long dress like mine is here or you can make it into a shorter dress that is all up to you but yeah, let's go ahead and talk about what we need and get started. Okay, my lovelies. So before we get this video started, I'm going to show you all the materials that I'm using for it. And as you can see here, we have this nice soft e blue, baby blue. Not baby blue, but nice blue. <laughs> I guess a little bit darker than baby blue. But this is the yarn that we're using here. This yarn is called Baby Love or Love Baby Fashion Georgia. Okay. It's an easy knit uh, yarn, uh, recommended hook size, if I can see here, it's four millimeter crochet hook. It's a lightweight number three. And let's see what else. It's 100% acrylic and it's 120 grams for this skin here. I got this yarn. I, I got a whole bunch of different ones that I will do a whole bunch of projects with. But I got this when I was still in Canada. And this is what caught my attention right here. It says Children Miracles Net Children's Miracle Network. So which means that if you support this, and as you can see here, it says for every ball of yarn love so uh, sold, a percentage of all proceeds will be donated to Children's Miracle Network. Thank you. And then it repeats that same message in French, okay? So I went to Walmart in Canada uh, and I just saw this yarn here. First of all, it's super soft because it's meant to make baby stuff. We've been though making an adult dress out of it because we need soft stuff as well. Oh, by the way, the color is called Sapphire. Okay, so that's the color name here. But anyways, when I saw these, I decided to get a whole bunch of them. But the mistake that I made was I got two skins for, for probably five different yarn so i got 10 skins like this but i got them in different colors so i got a black a white a green uh, a tan color but i got all different types of colors like this but i only got two two skins like this per color i could have probably done better by just getting cut some colors that i like but a lot of it so i could do multiple things with it but hey that's it anyways this is the yarn i'm using here I'm using two uh, crochet hooks here. I'm using a 3mm crochet hook and a 3.5mm crochet hook. I will explain quickly why. But I have a, a scissors here, a tape measure, a darning needle and some stitch markers. And the reason I have two of these is I'm going to use the small one to do the band of my dress, which is a part that's going to look like a belt in the middle of our waist. And then the rest of the project will be done in the 3.5 millimeter crochet hook. All right. So let's go ahead and start it. Sorry for the long intro, but I needed to just kind of explain everything in detail. But I'll see you guys in the next part of the video when I show you how to start it. Okay, my lovelies. So as you guys know, I'm trying to try different things for the video. Um, also because I'm trying to maybe unlock some ways that you guys like the, to watch the videos better. So instead of actually starting to show you how to do this band right off the bat, I complete the band first so you guys see what we're gonna be working on then when you see it then I can show you how to do it in a small sample quickly so you guys can get it done uh, as well but at least you see exactly what you need to do okay so with that said I'm going to so this is the band of the dress and as you guys have seen in the pictures um, this goes right above um, our waistline or just right uh, on the upper waist uh, part of our waist on, on the upper waist uh, of our body uh, and this is what's going to look almost like it's a belt when you have it on but it's not obviously because the rest of the dress is made in a mesh but this is the only solid part of the dress okay and the way i do that so i'll put this guy right here so i'm going to quickly show you guys how i do the band section and this is going to also uh, be how you however wide you want to do it this is how you're going to do it here so for this one here, this is about 14 chains that I started with. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yeah, so 13. And I start by doing a chain of 13. So I will do a slip knot like this. And then I will do my chain of 13. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 
and one two three so that's my chain of 13 here if you want your band to be wider than this which is the 13 uh, stitches then you will need to do more you could go to 15 you could go to 17 you could go to 20 if you want to and if you want it to be smaller than this then you will do less chains than this okay all right so let's go ahead and get started on how we do the band i'm going to skip the 13th stitch here and the 12th in the back of that chain i'm going to go ahead and grab that back loop just like this the, the first one is always the hardest to do but patience is the key like that and then we're going to do a single crochet then we're going to go into the next and do a back loop single crochet then we're going to go into the next and do a back loop single crochet and we just continue to do this until we get to complete this row and then when we complete this row we're going to start the second row which is our repeat row and you guys know how that works we do the back loop single crochets all the way until we have the final stitch where we go through both loops and then we repeat that until you have the complete band okay so i'm just finishing it off here so i can show you guys how to do the second row which is the repeat row then i will have you guys go and work on your band and when you're done come back i will be waiting for you guys to show you how to do the next part of the project okay and again with this yarn here is super slippery this is made for meant for babies is made to make baby stuff so it's very very soft even to work with it okay and because we're using metal crochet hooks they are very very slippery against it but hey it's life this is going to be a nice comfortable dress in the sense because it is made out of this yarn okay so i'm going in here i'm almost at the end Oops, sorry for shaking the camera, camera on you guys. And this is probably one of the most difficult yarns I've used. Not because it's the fault of the yarn, but it's just because it is made to be a very soft yarn. It is a little bit, it takes a little bit of attention to work with it. It pulls a lot as well, but nothing to be said as, an, as a negative thing, okay? So... If you're out there and you love this yarn, that's not the point I'm saying that. I'm just saying to be careful so that when you're working with this yarn, to be attentive, not to be watching TV and crocheting without looking because you will find that you have a lot of pulls everywhere. Anyways, our first row here is done. Second row, we do a chain one and turn. And then we go in the back loop now to work with our stitches. So we do a back loop, single crochet. We go to the next and do a back loop single crochet. As you can see here, I missed a string. I'm gonna go back and redo that part. And you do this all the way to the end. For the final one, you go through both loops. Then you chain one, turn, and from this point on, you're working with about 12 stitches all together, okay? And this part of it is not very difficult, but like I said, the yarn is very slippery, so just pay attention while you work okay so go ahead and complete this to the end when you get to the end you're gonna go through both loops chain one turn repeat what we just did in this row here then when you get to the end do go through both loops for the final stage chain one turn and then you just repeat that until you have this bad boy here okay i'm just gonna finish this so i can show you guys what i mean by going through both loops because i know if some of you are watching this video as your first video ever that i do that I've done then you're going to not understand what I'm talking about so I'm going to show you that so this is my final stitch right here so instead of grabbing the back loop only I'm going to go through both loops like this okay to complete my final half double or single crochet there like that and this is our second row done and then we would chain one and turn and then start that again the same way that we just did the, the last row, we start and do the exact same thing, okay? So you do this until you have the circumference of your waist completed. But more importantly, that it stretches to the widest part of your hips. This yarn is extremely stretchy. Look at this, okay? So for example, the widest part of my hips is 38 to 40 inches. So what I do is I do this so that when I stretch the material completely like this, it comes up to that 38 inches. When you have accomplished that, 
no matter what the size is small medium large extra large you know two extra large three extra large uh when you have finished that then you're gonna come back and when we you come back we're gonna show i'm gonna show you guys how to join this here which is pretty much right now so i'm assuming you guys have already paused the video completed the band and then came back okay and you turn the video back on and then at this moment we're going to use our darning needle to put our string that we left at the beginning and if you didn't leave a yarn at the beginning like this what you will do is you will cut this somewhere here and use that to do this and then you will reconnect it later on to be able to continue the work okay so for this part here we're going to go through that first loop here and we're going to match it to the other side and we're going to do this twice here and oftentimes I go through one loop to try to, to be able to do this, but because this yarn is really slippery, I don't want it to pull. So I'm just going to go through both loops to join, but I'm lining it up so that all the 12 rows, uh, 12 stitches are matching up with one another. And I'm just going to do these all the way like this until I get to the end here. And that will have our band joined. Okay. So I'll see you guys in a minute. Okay, and you guys will see here, I have just done the final one, but for that final one, we're going to do one more just to kind of um, reinforce that section here again, so that it's nice and tight. So we're going to go into that last one, one more time like this. Okay, then when we have it done, we're going to pull our darning needle off, then we're going to put it down like this. And as you guys can see, this is where we joined it. It's a little bit loose on the beginning here, which obviously is a little bit of an error, but because of the nature of this project, this is going to be worked on. Um, so we don't have to worry too much about that section there. Okay. Now we're going to lay our work down like this. Okay. And now what I'm going to do, we're going to work, we can either work with the bottom first and then the top. It's all up to you guys. But I think what we can do is if we work with the top of the dress first, um, if the, cause I only have two of these, remember, and I have 120 grams per skin and we're doing a dress. So what I will do is I will work with the top of the dress first, because that is important to finish. And then for the bottom, we're going to finish off the amount of yarn we have all together. So it could either be a mid length dress, or it could be a long dress that goes all the way to our ankles, depending on how much yarn we have left. Okay. So with that said, I'm going to make this part here, uh, one side of the dress and the opposite side, another part of the dress. I'm not going to count my stitches or anything, but if I lay down flat like this and take a darning needle, Oh, sorry, um, a stitch marker. And I put that stitch marker on the exact opposite side as this. So as you see, like this. What I will do is I will work my dress from here to here. And then I'll just keep it work. I will keep working it uh, from here to here all the way. And then we're going to do the same on the back side so that we have the two sides worked separately. And then for the top part of the dress, we're going to make a little bit of a change there. But for now, let's start this section here. Okay, my lovely. So I just prepped myself here so we can start working on this one side of the dress. And to do that, as you can see, I still have my hanging chain here, a uh, string that is connected to my, uh, to my ball, my yarn. And if you are to have cut this off to be able to use it to join this, then what you will do is you just bring it back here, do a slip stitch, go into the hole, bring it in. And this is exactly what you will end up having like this. And then for this next part, we're going to start by doing a chain of one. And then we're going to actually, let's not do that. I was having an idea to do a row of half double crochets, but we're not going to do that. We're just going to go right into the mesh section. So we're going to go ahead and do a chain of four. So one, two, three, and four. And then we're going to skip this stitch here, this stitch here, which is two. And in the third one here, we're going to do a half, a, a double crochet. Okay. Just like this. Okay, we're going to do a chain of two. Skip one, two, in the third, do a double crochet. And as you can see, I switched my hook as well. So I went from doing the band with this three millimeter crochet hook, okay, to working with this 3.5 millimeter crochet hook. So this is gonna help us make it so that it's not too, uh, 
it's not too tight so chain two skip one two and the third do our double crochet and what i mean by skip this and this is what i do is this protruding part here and the, uh, the uh, uh, this is a stitch the part that protrudes the, the part that dance in is a stitch the part that protrudes a stitch the part that dance is a stitch and so on and so forth so when i say skip one two i'm skipping the dented area and then the protruding area and then into the next dented area i'm doing a double crochet chain two i'm skipping the the protruding area the dented area and now on top of the protruding area i do a double crochet and then just repeat that all the way to the end of this section here and the end of this section being working to where the stitch marker is so go ahead and do the same when you get to the stitch marker come back and i will show you how to do the next part and then i will have you guys uh repeat uh because our second row is going to be a repeat row and then you guys can work on this part until it's time to uh, make a little bit of a change okay so i'll see you guys in a bit okay my lovelies so i have worked my mesh section here and i'm just about to get to my stitch marker so as you can see i'm gonna do my chain of two just as usual and then i'm gonna skip one two and on top of that here i'm gonna do my double crochet like this just like that and the very next part where i have my stitch marker is where is just the stitch right be before so i'm gonna stop here like this i'm not gonna keep going around and this part is halfway so it's, as you can see it's half from the other side okay and now we're gonna start the second row where we're turning this so the stitch marker we don't need it right now i'm gonna go ahead and do a chain of two or four so one two three four so the beginning of each row here is going to start with a chain of four then i'm going to skip these two stitches here and in the next stitch which happens to be the top of the previous double crochet i'm going to do a double crochet chain two on top of the previous double crochet do a double crochet and then chain two on top of the previous double crochet we do a double crochet and we just continue to do this all the way until the end so i'm gonna meet you guys at the end so i can show you guys how to do the final stitch uh, on this side here and then i will have you guys repeat this until you get uh, to a certain length and this certain length will be pretty much right now we're creating a part that will go from underneath underneath our bust uh, and cover our bust and when we have that fully covered however many inches that is for you you're gonna make sure you do it so it covers that section and then when it goes right um below your collarbone then we're gonna create the straps okay so we're gonna create the straps for the top and then uh so which means we will come back so i can show you how to do that part but for now this is pretty much what we do all the way to the uh just right below our collarbone okay but i'm gonna continue this here so i can show you guys how to complete this row and start the next row because then this is actually going to be the part that you repeat okay see you guys in a bit okay my lovelies so as you can see here i just completed the second row i do have one more to do this is why i wanted you guys to come back so for that chain four that we started the previous row with we are going to do a chain two because the first two chains count as a double crochet and the second two chains count as the chain two so which mean one two on top of the second chain from the bottom we're gonna do a double crochet and that would leave it so that it's straight like this and we're gonna do the same on this end when we work to this side okay so you've chain four two of those chain counts as a double crochet and the two chains count as the chain two that you do between each of the stitches then you're gonna do a chain four so one two three four so each row is gonna start with a chain four and as you guys see here i flip my work so that it's easy for me to work with it when it's flipped like this as supposed to work with it while it's twist, twisted inwards okay and then again i'm gonna go into these um let's hold it like this i'm gonna go into the previous double crochet and do a double crochet on top of that which means i'm automatically skipping two stitches in between chain two go on top of the previous double crochet and do a double crochet chain two go on top of the previous double crochet and do a double crochet and then you just repeat this like i said again until you have 
the length here so again imagine that this belt thing is going to go right underneath your bust okay i cannot show you guys right now but it goes underneath your bust uh, and which means this is a part that will cover your bust and so if you take your tape measure you know and you put your tape measure i use inches right underneath your collarbone to right underneath your bust if you are to have this dress on you need the whole thing from here to there to be 10 inches so you want this actually we're gonna do it below because we need the straps as well so we're gonna do eight inches from here to there we're gonna do eight inches which is just the part that covers our bust like this and then the rest of it is gonna be the straps that we do which will probably not be too long it will be like a st straps that are just uh, short enough that will connect from this panel to the back panel okay so for me i will do let's say six to eight inches let's not go for eight right away we'll go from to six after six i will try to have it on to see if it covers my bust if it doesn't then i will continue to increase until about the eight inches okay so go ahead and work on this when you have completed that the next part of it is going to be to do the back or what we can simply do is we can do this part here actually you know what just finish this part when you come back i will show you what to do next because i don't want to explain things in advance it may kind of throw you off so just go ahead and finish this here create however many rows that it takes to cover your bust when you have that come back i will show you how to do what to do next okay see you guys in a okay, bit okay my lovelies so i have gone ahead and worked uh about 18 rows i believe let me just count here one two three four five six seven eight nine ten one two three four fourteen not eighteen fourteen rows of the bust area of my dress here and as you can see it doesn't look like it's too big but i really really want this belt to just go right underneath my bust so it's going to kind of like be a high uh a high belt uh just right underneath my bust, which bust which is really good i think instead of it being uh, right in the middle of your waist or uh, below your waist okay so this is kind of not below your waist you know what i mean this is kind of where i want to stop with it i've tried it on and made sure that it's going to be the good size so now we're going to build just a little bit of uh, uh, sleeves here just a little bit of a, um, a part that goes here that will connect to the back sorry i'm kind of out of my words here so if i'm not making any sense i hope uh, you guys will understand me still but yeah anyway so i'm gonna work a couple of rows here so i'm gonna work into one two three four five so in these five uh, gaps here and then i'll do the same on the other side when it comes time to do that but i'll show you how to do it on one and then i will have you guys complete on the other and then we would work the back side and the back side will just be worked exactly the same but for now let me quickly show you guys how to do this section here so just like we start every row we start with a chain of four so one two three and four and turn and then in the next stitch here we're gonna do not the next we skip two in the third we're gonna do our double crochet just like we've been doing so nothing is changing here at all then we chain two we skip two stitches in the next stitch we do a double crochet chain two so that's one two and we do that the same way we just did the previous section and as you can see i have one two three i have three of these gaps and i'm gonna want to do five all together so this is four and we can look at it to see if we want to keep it at four or we want to do five and i think this is actually good one two three four i think these four gaps are good like this for it to be a section that goes up and then now i'm going to turn back to work on this uh the section again so i'm going to do a chain of four one two three and four and then i'm going to turn and then i'm going to work a double crochet after skipping two stitches on the third stitch which is on top of the previous double crochet i'm going to do a double crochet chain two i'm going to do a double crochet in the third stitch chain two a double crochet in the third stitch chain two double crochet in the one two so the second stitch from the left hand side like that okay so as you can see i'm gonna work this like this probably about five to six rows of this here and when that's completed i'm going to disconnect my yarn and i'm going to connect it at this end here 
and do the same thing I just did, did here. So I'm going to connect it, do a chain of four, start my stitches the same way. And then I will match the number of, uh, number of rows on this side as I did on that side. And then when it's done, I'll come back and I will show you guys how to connect the yarn and start the back side because we're going to do the back as well, okay? So I will see you guys when you've completed the number of rows you want here and here. Now, in terms of knowing how many rows to do, keep in mind you're going to do the same for the back. So if you do six rows here, you're going to do six rows in the back. So you're going to have 12 rows altogether that is going to go over your shoulder for when you put on the dress on each of the sides. So just be aware of that, okay? So I will see you guys when you've completed this side. Okay, my lovelies. So I completed one side. I just wanted to come and show you guys how it looks like. So I actually ended up doing eight rows of these here. Um, just because I did six, so without these two here, and it was a little bit shorter, and I think I like it. I would rather that is hanging a little bit lower as opposed to going way too tight above um, my chest, okay? So this is why I did eight, and then I cut the yarn off. I left, made sure I had left a string that I would be able to join this side on uh, with. And then now I'm gonna join the yarn on the other side here, so I can do the same. So I've already cut the yarn that I cut is already here. So I'm just going to do a quick slip knot here, just like that. And then I will pretty much remove that and I will go into the chain four that we had here. So one, two, and in the third one, right up here. And of course, you're just going to line it up so that it makes sense on how you put the, the hook through. And then I'm going to put the yarn that I have, the slip knot. I'm going to bring it through like that. And then I'm going to do my chain of four. So one, two, three, four. And then I'm going to skip two stitches here and in the third just like we've been doing i'm going to do my double crochet and i'm going to chain two skip these two stitches in the third do a double crochet okay chain two do a double crochet after skipping two stitches and then I'm going to make sure, obviously, I match it to this side. So on this side, I have one, two, three, four of the holes. One, two, three. I have one more to do. So one, two, skip two stitches. And in this fourth box, I'm going to go ahead and do a double crochet. Like that. Okay, so now I have these both four uh, squares here that matches the other side. And now I'm not going to go any further, so I'm going to turn here. So I'm going to do a chain of four and then turn. And then I'm going to work my next row, which is going to be repeating what we just did already here. I'm going to go into the third stitch from the hook and do a double crochet, chain two, go into the next stitch after skipping to do a double crochet chain two skip two stitches in the third do a double crochet chain two skip two stitches and in the third do a double crochet okay so this is how it looks here so i'm going to do this six more times so these two rows i've completed i'm going to do six more so i can match it to this side when I have the complete eight done, I'm going to come back and then we will work on the back side of this dress. Okay, so I'll see you guys in a bit. Okay, my lovelies. So I have completed both sides as you see here. So the uh, one of the panels, whether it be the back or the front is done in terms of uh, not having joined them yet. But, you know, we have the other side to do the same way. So I'm going to jump right into it and show you guys how to start the back side. So as you guys see, this is where the circle that we started with is. We did have to be either the front or the back panel. And now we're going to do the other side. So again, I have my yarn here ready to go. I'm just going to do a slip knot as per usual so we can get it started here. And now that I have my slip knot, I'm going to work. This is my right hand side. I'm going to go right into the uh, stitch right next to the other one. So just right next to that one right here. I'm going to go into that and then I'm going to insert my hook through and then bring my slip knot through that, like that. And then from here on, I'm going to do my chain of four. So one, two, three, four. 
and then i'm going to count uh the stitches so if you remember how we did this we did this and then we skipped two and then in the third we put a stitch so here i'm going to skip this and this and in the next which is the third i'm going to do a double crochet okay so we're just gonna go into that and do a double crochet and i'm going to do a chain of two skip this and this in the next i'm going to do a double crochet chain two skip this and that and then third do a double crochet so just what we did with the other side we're doing exactly the same thing on this side here okay so i'm gonna do this all the way to this end here when you reach this end and as would i uh, come back to the video i will show you how to start the second row and then i'm gonna have you guys repeat that because the second row is a repeat until you have for example for me i have 14 stitches here so i'm gonna do the 14 stitches before i do the sleeves like this okay so i will see you guys when you've reached this end here okay so i've completed this first row for the other side of the panel and as or, uh, the other side of the dress the other panel and as you can see here i just completed it right into this stitch here which means there's a stitch between here that we're not working into okay so to start the second row we're going to do a chain of four so one two three and four and then of course we're going to turn and then we're going to do skip these two stitches and in the third we're going to do a double crochet chain two skip these two stitches in the third do a double crochet and there's no need to re-explain it here but you guys know what is going on so we're going to continue to work this just like we did this other side okay so as you can see we did the for me particularly for my size which is a small i worked 14 stitches here before i completed out of one two three four boxes this way i did eight rows and then i did eight rows on the other side as well so we're gonna do exactly the same thing here so match whatever you did for the other panel when you've completed both fully come back we will go ahead and work on the bottom but we will join the top here so that the top is finished and then we will start working on the bottom and the bottom is going to be the same thing here but it's going to be a long okay so go ahead and complete this panel when you've completed this come back and we will go ahead and work in the bottom part. okay my lovelies so i have completed the top portion of this dress and as you can see i haven't joined anything yet so my two pieces are still not two pieces is one piece connected by the band here but you can see that i haven't joined the tops here yet which i will do later there's no rush for us uh, for that so i will show you guys how to do the bottom part of uh, the dress here uh, but yeah eventually we will join this top here i obviously did not have to leave two strings like this for each one just one side would have been enough but i made a mistake and i ended up leaving the string a little bit longer on both sides here but we don't need both of them but we will use one of them to join this section here where we will just line up and and join and join and i'm not sure yet if i want to join the sides here i may actually just leave the sides here open uh, but I could also just join so that I have the arm uh, uh, hole or the arm opening on each side and just join a little bit in the bottom here. But I haven't decided on that yet, okay? Now, to go ahead and get started with the bottom part of the dress, I'm just going to get my yarn here. And for this, I'm going to talk a little bit about sizing. So obviously, this here is the part that goes around the widest part of our hip as we talked about at the beginning. So it's very stretchy but it's gonna be tight so if you are to wear this um uh, it's obviously gonna be a dress that you need to wear something underneath maybe a pair of nice shorts or stockings and things like that but if you want it to be a little bit on the loose this is where you will try to increase it from or you can increase it a little bit later uh, down the dress when you get to your hips but what i prefer to do usually is that we could just increase from here so it's kind of nice and and loose and not too uh, huggy unless you want it like that okay so i will show you some of the options on how you can increase it and i will probably increase mine just in the first row so that uh to show you guys as well how you increase so i'm gonna do a slip knot here just something like that and i'm gonna start you can start on either side but i will start here on this section here i'm just gonna take my hook and put it through this section here bring my slip knot hook through like that just like we have done when we have started a new row of this and then from here we do a chain of four so one two three 
and four then i'm going to skip one two and in the third section here i'm going to go in with a double crochet like that then chain two skip here and here and on top of here we do a double crochet so as you can see here nothing changes it's pretty much like the way we did the top part of it so i'm not gonna uh, show you guys everything too much but you're pretty much gonna go around and when you get to here you're gonna do your final one probably around here and slip stitch but i will show you how you will increase so i will do this chain four two two of them counts as a double crochet and then the other two so, 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 counts as a chain two i cannot speak today i'm telling you um and that's why we do we have these gaps here so what i will do is i will do one two three chain two one two and the third i do a double crochet and what i'm doing here is i'm just trying to get to a certain number of one two in the third of these blocks before i can do an increase so i can do an increase here so let's say i do one two three four and in the fifth i do an increase so let's say i was going to do an increase here and as you can see i've done my double crochet what i would do then is i will do a double crochet uh, sorry a chain two and then go into that same stitch and do a double crochet like that so this would be an increase here so now instead of just one stitch here you have two stitches in that same space so this is one way you can increase uh actually i think for me right now this is the only way i can increase and then you will do a chain of two skip here skip here on here go ahead and do a double crochet and you can gap this out based on how wide you want it to be so if you do every five squares you do uh, an increase every five squares you do an increase then that could be the only increase you do because then in the next row this part is going to be really wide for you and that's what i'm going to do i'm going to do this where every five uh, stitches i do every five uh, boxes like this i do an increase until i come all the way here so go ahead and do what you need to do if you don't increase you just work these stitches the same way that we do, did it on this side here so go ahead and finish this row when you get to here come back and i will show you guys what to do next okay my lovelies so i have completed the first uh round here and as you can see this is pretty much how it looks i've increased every five boxes i have increased my part here so when i do the next row it should start to widen out a little bit but like i said again this is very stretchy so this dress is gonna hug you and it's gonna look really nice but just so that it's actually not as tight especially when it comes to around my hips as um as a, as i i would like to well, i don't like it like that so i would like to have it a little bit loose that's why i'm increasing it here so now that you have reached here you have your two stitches here that you will skip so of course you will do your chain of two and then you will count one two and in the third stitch from the bottom you're going to slip stitch just like this because we're working in a round round now that you have that you're going to do your chain of four and turn this way you're going to start to turn as you work so that you don't have a seam that is going crooked and then you skip these two stitches and in the next you're going to do a double crochet chain two skip these two stitches and in the third do a double crochet and always remember your chain four here the first two chains count as a double crochet and then your chain two is what separates the, the stitches okay and then you're going to do a go ahead and do a chain two go into the next uh after skipping two stitches you go into the next and do a double crochet and then you just continue to do this and as you can see here this is where we increased so after i do my chain of two i'm gonna go into on top of the first double crochet here and complete my double crochet and i'm gonna do a chain of two skip the two chains here and in the next double crochet of where we increased we're gonna do the next double crochet and as you can see then it just kind of goes continuously like this okay so the one stitch here creates these two stitches now which is why it, it's called an increase chain two skip these two stitches and in the next do a double crochet chain two skip these two stitches and in the next do a double crochet and then you just continue to do this all around until you come back here you will do your final double crochet right here chain two slip stitch in the one two in the second from the bottom and then chain four turn and repeat and this is how you're going to start to continue to work on your project 
from this point on until you have the length that you're looking for so i'm not sure yet how big uh how long i will do it it was going to depend with the amount of yarn i have left so if i uh if the amount of yarn allows i still have another skein so as you can see this is the first skin that we started with it's starting to get really hollow inside because i did this part already but i have a second one like this and if it allows me to make it long so it goes all the way down then i will do that but if it doesn't where it stops is where it's gonna stop but you're gonna decide how long you want it to be if you want it to be a short uh, mesh dress then you're gonna stop where you want it if you want it to be long then just continue until you have the length that you're looking for so i'm gonna work on my dress here until i have the length and when I'm satisfied with the length, I'm going to come back and we will look at it together and complete the video. And I will see you guys at that time. Okay, my lovelies. So I have gone ahead and worked down my dress. And as you can see, I have finished the two skeins of yarn. So we started off obviously up higher here. We started off in the center where the belt is. Uh, and then we worked ourselves up and then we went ahead and started working on ourselves back this way so just a few things that i would like to talk to you guys a little bit about um so we increased i showed you guys how guys how to increase in this area here which makes this part so that it fits and what i did was i did not increase in the next row i continued to work it for about probably about 10 rows and then if you see in this row right here i went back to increasing as you can see this is an increase right here Okay, and this is an increase right here and right there. So every 10 uh, stitches I increased. And uh, what that does is it creates a wider part when it comes around my hips. Not that this would not have fit my hips here, but it would have been a, a, a very like tight fit. And I wanted it to be a little bit of a looser fit. So I increased in that section here about 10 rows down. And then that created a wider, a much wider side going all the way down. Okay so i have worked my dress until i am pretty much out of yarn that's the only reason i stopped i will quickly show you what i have left here and i may do one more final row but i may not but uh, i do have just this amount left here okay this is all i have left and i stopped here because i may need some of the yarn to join parts of the dress on top that i haven't joined yet but i'm not sure if i'm gonna join here i may leave this section open uh which is pretty much just right underneath our armpits and a little bit going down uh but for now what i will do is i will join the top okay so i will go ahead and use my darning needle and join this section up here okay and then i'll do the same on this side and then when these two are joined i'm going to put on my dress to see how this looks when it's left open like this. Because if you think about it, if I was to join it, I would be joining just about that much because the rest of it here have to be my arms opening. Um, so, but if I was to leave it all open like this, what would happen? So I'm gonna try that obviously. So do the same if you want yours to be completely closed. What you will do is you will just leave a section right here where your arm will come through. And then you will make sure you just join a tiny bit of this section here. So it will just be from here to probably around somewhere here. Okay, so I'll quickly show you guys how to join this section here. It's not very complicated. You take your darning needle and it doesn't matter which one. I cannot end up leaving two of these guys here. But I will use this back one and I'll just put this yarn into my darning needle like that. Then I will hold these two pieces together and I will make sure they're lined up very nice and perfect like this okay and then I will use my darning needle to go through from here back okay so you just kind of joining it like that and I will hold this hanging string down so it doesn't kind of interfere with our work I'll do it again in that exact same spot and then I will pretty much at this point on just line up my stitches and grab a little bit of it on this side and a little bit on the other side. Then move it on, go to the next spot, move that up. Oops, I was kind of a little bit off camera there. Okay, so you just line up your work and you just continue to join it from this end, match it to the other side and then bring it through. 
so there's nothing too complicated on how you join these here it doesn't have to be extremely accurate but what needs to be really accurate is that you're lining it up really well so that it's not kind of a, it's not kind of a, um, crooked or not lined up properly okay so that is all you need to care about is making sure it's lined up to the other panel so the both panels are lined up like this as you can see mine okay and you just continue to do your joining i'm gonna do one here and then one last one kind of like almost towards the bottom but not really like that then i'll do one more right there just to secure the section like that okay and then when i remove my darning needle you will have it joined like this okay so as you can see this is where we joined it doesn't look like you've joined there at all it looks like just one of these sections here okay so go ahead and do the same on this side weave in your ends okay make sure those are weaved in weave in any of the ends that you have kind of like hanging around when you have done that try your dress on without joining these parts first if you do see that it doesn't look okay with these parts open then come back i will show you how to join these sections here in and if i don't i'll talk about how we do it and then we will be done with our dress so go ahead and join this section here first and then come back okay my lovelies so i have joined the uh, both sides so as you can see i joined my top here and here and so this dress is pretty much completed i actually just tried the dress on it looks really nice having this section here open it does give it because it is a it's a dress that you have to wear something inside of it um it's not something that you can wear like this i guess unless you want to but it's really really see-through um but i will probably be wearing it with like burlesque inside or something like that the same thing for the bottom probably some nice uh tights or shorts um that you can wear inside with the color that goes with this blue uh, would be what works best so this here i left open so this is where my arm comes through here and on the other side here but it does have this gap just right underneath your ampeta shows okay so that part of it of this dress being really sexy is that you can have this section here open and then of course it goes all the way down i have also gone ahead and uh, completed weaving in at the end i cut off the little bit of yarn that i had left and then i weaved in the end right here as you can see and that pretty much completes the dress i have done all of the weaving in and nothing is hanging in anywhere anymore and yeah so we have come to the end of the dress so this kind of sits really high and i will show you guys obviously in the pictures so or i've already showed you some of the pictures but as you will see this is really high up um the belt section here of the dress it sits right underneath underneath your bust which is kind of exactly what we're aiming for okay all right well this is the end of the project here thank you so much you guys for watching the video all the way to the end and I appreciate you guys sticking through because it does help with my algorithm if you watch the video all the way through and then just not click in and out of it. And yeah, thank you so much. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you have not yet done so. Make sure you like, comment, and share the video. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.